Welcome, everybody, to Secret Sauce, the show where we hear real-time insights from commercial real estate industry leaders. I'm Carly Iacono. Today, I am honored to be joined by an icon in the New York commercial real estate scene, Paul Massey. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? Great. Thanks for having me, Carly. I appreciate it very much. Really my pleasure. So you are currently uh, the CEO of B6 Realty Advisors, but that is just the latest iteration of a very long and deep career in the industry. So I'd love to kick off today's conversation with some background of you and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so I got um, <clears throat> I got lucky. I, I was involved with my fraternity in college and um, there was an alum who was supposed to come around and make sure we weren't burning the house down a couple of times a year. And uh, he was a CBRE national accounts uh, officer, and he um, offered me a summer job in my hometown of Boston, working for CBRE in, in their tenant tracking database system. And um, I loved it. I, I, the minute I saw commercial real estate, I knew that it, it was for me and CB was such a great place. So long story short, I went out to uh, get done with school and went running back to the Boston office, hoping to get a job. And the boss there wouldn't hire me. He said, um, it's a mature office. We have one opening and I've got a Xerox copier salesman and an IBM computer salesman. I'm going to pick one of them and I'm not going to roll the dice on college kid. And um, so I went back to my fraternity connection and he said, well, that's the bad news. The good news is we're brand new in New York City and they'll take anybody there. So I, uh, being Can so you imagined, right? <laughs> being, being so qualified, um, right. my grand plan was come down to New York, uh, impress them with how hard I was working and get them to <clears throat> send me back to Boston. And, um, the minute I got here, I fell in love with New York city, but I went to school in upstate New York. So a, a whole bunch of my friends were here and, um, I quickly realized I was never leaving New York. There are worse places to get stuck. I'm sure you've never, never looked back. That's Love great. It. Yeah, that's great. So why don't we kind of segue because you have so much knowledge that I, I want to jump right in. I'm very excited. I know our listeners are as well to hear your insights on the market and where we are in commercial real estate. So let's let's go in fee first. What do you think? about the Fed's current economic policy and where are we going to be in, in 12 months? Just lay it all out for us. I think the Fed's been great. They devised a plan. They've stuck to it. Um, it seems to be having effect without too much trauma. I thought two weeks ago when they bumped rates up again, it was really, really great that they did that because um, I think had they not bumped up a little bit, the, the, the implication could have been that the banking system was failing or weaker. Um, so I think it gave people uh, confidence that the banking system can take the rate increase. Um, and if I were to guess, I, I, I'd probably get a lot of disagreement on this, but I'd be surprised if they didn't hold um, and not increase rates um, the, on the next go round, um, which would probably send the country into some form of euphoria or um or or celebration um so but we'll see what the data tells them they should be doing but um i think um i think it's steady i think the next year is going to be steady on, on in terms of rates that is more positive than i've heard from most people so <laughs> being a broker in commercial real estate that is music to my ears and i am going to take it as the gospel so thank you <laughs> Um, I think our prediction is another 25 basis point increase. I'm seeing a lot of those right. predictions, but I think if you don't see, um, oh, I, I just suspect there's going to be some lagging job data, um, employment data that comes out that gives them the ability not to bump up. Mm -hmm. I do agree that it would be a, a huge celebration if the rate increases moderate or, or stop altogether. And it's funny that's so relative to things that we get excited about, but we're like, this is fantastic. We're not doing, you know, increases every two months. Let's let's go celebrate. So all relative to where we are. 
So with that said, do you think interest rates and cap rates, two separate things to answer, will be higher or lower in 12 months? They're inextricably linked. Um, I think they'll be flat from where they are now. I, I think I think interest rates will be uh, right around this ballpark, and I think the cap rates are gonna gonna stabilize. And I think people need that. Um, there is definitely a lack of confidence in where things are right now, but I think if we have another six months of stability, I think people will get brave again and and dive back into the market. Sure, hope so. It feels like we're on the edge of that. So, yeah, that's the case. Exactly. Where do you see opportunity in the, the New York market? Or if you want to extrapolate that nationally, where do you see opportunity in commercial real estate right now? I'd say, I think I'd make the same comment locally or nationally. I just buy the biggest office building I could find. <laughs> I Get <think>. out. <laughs> You'd buy the biggest office building you could find and do what with it? <laughs> think, think about it. Um, a lot of very, very healthy businesses are on pause right now. Um, the Amazons, the Googles, um, all, all, the, all the tech companies, um, they're being very careful right now. They have fundamentally great growing businesses. And um, I think they're going to they're, they're gonna start gobbling up space. The minute they do, that'll be a cue for everyone else to, you know, to come back and make a commitment to office. So I think if you were to you know, ring a bell today, it would be that we were absolutely at the bottom of the market in a year from now, um, things will have stabilized. And two years from now, you could be looking at a robust office market, which in turn would um, make the retail market, especially in Midtown and Downtown, New York, Manhattan, um, the, the, those two are also, you know, heavily linked. So I think the retail market will come back with the office market. Do you feel similarly bullish on suburban office as you do urban? Um, suburban office is always, uh, to me, a boutique business. If you look at the scale of it and the size of it um, relative to the, the, the Manhattan market um, in its entirety, it's um, I, I think it's just it's a it's a whole different thing. It's it's always going to be the suburban office market, and there's always going to be some demand for office space there. But uh, the big drivers are going to be in Midtown and Midtown West. Okay, I love this uh, contrarian yet exceptionally positive viewpoint. Again, we'll take mm -hmm. it. Sounds good. Do you see anything policy-wise, kind of coming down the pike, that you think will materially affect commercial real estate owners? Uh, and for our listeners who don't know, you, you're obviously extremely politically savvy, right? With a lot of insight, we'll just say. So what do you see on the horizon that we should all be aware of? Um, I think New York City and probably all major metro markets need a uh, need a, an affordable housing program. I think there are a lot of people who struggle and we don't have enough. Uh, we don't have enough uh, housing for those folks. So it's too expensive. We're not creating the housing stock in New York City is 85 years old on average. So we need to replicate or, or retrofit some of what we have. Um, but but right now, the, the current housing program, the tax abatement program that the state has is, is lapsing. And um, we need something that's uniform and as of right put in place, um, which has not been the last administration's strong suit um the the, the mayor um so we we need to create housing we we're we've been living in a housing shortage for years and we will have population growth in new york so we need to account for that too so put in place a across the board as a right housing program the state also in my opinion overreacted um and put in place rent regulation that basically says you can't can't raise your rents and you can't fix up units and pass that cost through. So uh, it significantly devalued uh, the residential multifamily market in New York City um, because people were buying at a four or five cap and driving to an eight cap, which is a good business plan. 
now they're buying at a seven or eight cap and probably driving to a four cap with inflation with no ability to increase revenue. That's a bad formula because the city is significantly dependent on direct real estate tax from buildings like those. And um, I think you're going to see budget shortfalls because assessed values on uh, multifamily are going to be declining. Um, so that overreaction is really killing the golden goose. Um, uh, the city does not have um, <clears throat> a lot of variability in its budget, where the first thing to go are going to be social programs, which were meant to help the people that the, po the politicians were trying to help. Um, so it, I think it's completely backwards now, and we need to reverse and um, uh, back up on some of the, re the rent regulation that we have. Such an insightful viewpoint. What do you think could potentially be rolled back first? And I know a lot of this has to do with how you know the election goes upcoming, but is there one area that you see change might be easier for either party to enact and maybe more likely than something else? I think the governor will catch flack for it, but she could put in place a 421A program, a 421A lookalike that would encourage de developers to get back into the market. That would be a good thing. I think you could you could back off the rent regulations by allowing uh, people to pass through um, uh, renovation of apartments to to the tenants. Um, because you know, right now people are warehousing units. There's a report that there are forty thousand units that are uh, sitting vacant right now because it doesn't pay to fix them up. I mean, that, that's a real stat and that's really uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope that the next few years bring us some um, uh, easier, more favorable, better, I guess, yeah, insert your adjective of choice, regulation changes that that make the, uh, the housing situation in particular improve. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Aside from rising interest rates, tightness in the credit markets, all the things that we're all facing in commercial real estate, what's one challenge that you are facing in your business and how are you overcoming that? Um, a big challenge in the market right now is people's perception of maybe um, class B and C office space could be converted to residential. But I think what people don't know, including um, people on the political side is that math doesn't work. Um, a lot of the structures are, um, are, are, are too big for, you know, appropriate residential use. Um, if you really look at the math of what it would take to retrofit a building, you almost can't pay anything for the underlying land um, to do the conversion. So I think there's going to be a lot of talk, especially political talk about we should convert uh, all this unused office space to residential, it makes no sense. Um, I think we should embrace being pro-business and filling back up the office space that we have. Um, but you're going to hear a lot of um, a lot of chatter about this that really doesn't make economic sense. So as soon as we embrace that, we can get about the business of becoming a business-centric city again, and um, and that would be uh, that would be a good thing and treat people like. Um, Amazon and people who are growing um, with, you know, more, more deference. I love in real estate, there's so many conceptual ideas that the people just grab hold of that in practicality don't work as well. And I think that's the perfect example. I feel similarly about mall to industrial conversions. It's, it's not as easy as people think, right? There's a lot more to it and it, it doesn't mm -hmm. always pencil. So I, I think that's very important that you brought up that that, that conversion is not always se as seamless or straightforward as one might hope. Yeah. So let's just make office office and strengthen it. Like you said, that's good. I'd like you to touch on the, the overall banking climate. And I know we didn't talk about this previously, but what are your thoughts on obviously the, the lender defaults or the bank defaults that we saw and what that means for commercial real estate moving forward? Well, it took, in our city, it took a major player out of the market, Signature Bank, where the, they, right. they they were our bank. We we loved them. They were great people. Um, I, you know, 
I can speculate about, you know, their crypto involvement, but I really don't understand that. Um, I do think they probably made a tactical error, which is now playing out where getting back to the 2019 rent laws, um, they claimed in earnings calls and stated publicly that they didn't have any loan to value issues with their multifamily stock. That could have been played, you know, completely the opposite and said, we've just had a massive hit. Our, our loan of values are going to be challenged um, and just own it. I mean, they didn't cause it. The, 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 the assembly and the Senate in Albany caused that. So if they just owned it, um, they could have been digging out of it openly um, and, and, you know, not to have near community uh, buy the, 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 the residential loans is, is telling. Um, and what discount they trade for uh, will also be telling, and I suspect it will be significant. So it sounds like there was some mismanagement, not just market factors at play there, which makes me, for one, feel more confident long term because it feels more localized, more isolated. Are you expecting similar concerns with, with other banks over the next 12 months? Or do you really think that that was uh, a more isolated incident? Yeah, I, I, mismanagement might have been a strong word, but I would more call it opportunity. And um, and I think now with, you know, with the bank's collapse, there'll be an overreaction to the quality of the loans they had. They, they were very talented lenders and had generally very, very good clients and very, very good buildings. But, you know, those buildings were externally affected. So, um, again, owning that would have been a really big uh, opportunity and, um, you know, that, so that's not going to be. But really, you, when you've got a significant lender pull out of the market, uh, lending criteria are going to be more strict. Um, rates are probably going to be up uh, because the, the, the competitors that are left are going to uh, want to take advantage of that. Um, so I, I think it's going to be a very conservative, slow moving lending market. But it, it's going to be fascinating to see who buys um, the signature real estate loan portfolio. Fascinating. And in what chunks, and I suspect they're going to be very big chunks because I'm assuming the government wants to get its money out so it can pay the depositors that it's guaranteed. So I think this is going to be fast moving. And I, I think if you think about where the market was and where it was headed, this will accelerate probably a, a, a path to a stable and happier day. Great job tying all of this instability back to a smooth sailing path. That'd like a, a true uh, professional. Before we we move on to just a few more things, I'd love to learn about your, your career and um, personal side of the story. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners about the market or commercial real estate in general? No, my crystal balls is cloudy as everyone else's so i don't know i feel pretty good about your crystal ball relative to everyone else's i'm, I'm talking to so yeah. thank you you shined it up well i would uh i would say just the opposite well i was i gave a speech to uh one of the industry groups a couple months ago and i i proclaimed that we were in a recession then so i it, it it's not um it it's good to, to call it like it is i mean we had massive uh lack of volume because of rent regulation. We had COVID for seven or eight months completely shut down. We had interest rates spiking. I mean, it has not been a party. So the optimism is more a belief in long term in the market and the fact that we're going to uh, probably see increased velocity, increased demand um, over the next year or two. So I, I think that's kind of a natural progression. I agree. And when you highlight all those things just in succession, it's amazing how resilient the city and the market is in general. I mean, the exactly. fact that we're all doing this well is quite remarkable. And I think as things smooth out, it's just going to absolutely take off, not just in New York, but in commercial real estate velocity in general nationwide. Exactly. So let's talk about your career for just a few minutes. Um, 
and, and some advice because we all love good advice. What was sort of a pivotal moment you could share with us about your career, something that went really well, you're proud of and happy about, or something maybe you wish you would have done differently that that we can learn from? Um, meeting Bob Knackle was a lucky stroke. We both worked as uh, college interns at CBRE and ended up in New York around the same time. And uh, we informally partnered there for five years uh, in, an, in the investment sales group. So we were selling buildings back then too. And then, um, starting Massey Knackle when we were too young to know any better uh, was a blast. And we had 26 years of that. Um, probably the best piece of advice I've ever taken was uh, Bob suggested we sell our company in 2014 because he said, you're going to be 54 and people are going to think you're a hotshot manager. And um, if you wait until you're 70, which is when I, what I think you'd probably like to do, uh, you know, who knows? And, um, and, that was a good execution and it was even better timing. So um, I owe a lot to Bob. Congrats on that, by the way. It, yeah. uh, it's well known in our part of the country. What a success, both the company you built and the exit. So well, it's not very highly of. So congratulations on pulling that off. It was all fun. <laughs> wow. All of it, really? No, I'm kidding. That's great. Good way to look at it. This has been so much fun and so insightful. We're really grateful for your perspective and insights on the market, where we are and where we're going, and then a little bit of, of tidbits along the way. I greatly appreciate you sharing your time with us. and I know our listeners do as well. So thank you for everything. We're so happy you could be a guest and we hope to see you again very soon. Thanks, Carly, all the best. And to everyone listening, that was Secret Sauce. We're pleased you could join us and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Have a great day, everyone.